So let's look now at classifying inorganic compounds. And a lot of science is about classifying and putting things into groups. So organic compounds. First of all, if we have an organic compound, an organic compound is something that has a high percentage of carbon. And this is what we consider organic compounds. If something is organic, it has a high percentage of carbon, if it doesn't have a high percentage of carbon, then it's considered inorganic. And these inorganic compounds are really what we've looked at in chemistry so far. We've mostly looked at things that don't have a high percentage of carbon, but are considered inorganic. Inorganic compounds can be classified into two categories. And these two categories are going to sound familiar to us. The first one is what's considered molecular. Now, a molecular inorganic compound is a covalent bond. It has non-metals, and these non-metal molecular compounds are a very, very small group of inorganic compounds, but very, very common. So small group, very common, things like carbon dioxide, water, small category in the molecular compound, but there is a lot of carbon dioxide, a lot of water. So small group, but very common. The other type is ionic, and an ionic inorganic compound is an ionic bond. This deals with a metal and a non-metal. This is a much, much larger category, and one of these inorganic compounds, or many of these organic compounds we've seen, NaCl, FeCO3. Again, metal, non-metal, metal, polyatomic ion just combining together to form an inorganic compound. And if we were to look at this in a chart form, here's a situation where we could classify compounds, either organic or inorganic. And if they're inorganic, they can be one of two categories, covalent or ionic, but it's still metal versus non-metal. Now we're gonna look at one subcategory here, inorganic compounds, because an inorganic compound can actually be classified one more way such as an acid, a base, or a salt. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to look at the ions and the different properties present in the ions to classify these inorganic compounds. Now, what classifies something as an acid? Well, what has to happen is when it's in solution, it's going to release an H plus ion. And an H plus ion tells us that it is an acid whereas a base are going to release a different kind of ion, an OH ion, in solution. Now, if it's not an acid or a base, it is considered a salt, and a salt releases any other ions that are not an H plus or an OH minus. Now, this in solution, what this means is we take this inorganic compound and we put it in solution, usually in water, and we consider that this is now aqueous, AQ. We're going to use this symbol for in solution, aqueous, meaning it is dissolved in water. And these compounds, when we dissolve them in water, can create an acid, a base, or a salt. There is another category of molecular compounds that are considered indicators. And an indicator is a molecular compound that has a certain characteristic color, something unique to it. Now what makes it an indicator is that if we take this compound and react it with an acid or a base, it actually forms a different compound, and here's the important key, a different color. And this color can actually determine whether it's reacting with an acid or a base. Now there are many, many different indicators that are potentially possible. Your data booklet has some of the common indicators that we're going to look at, and we can see something like methyl red will change its color depending on whether it's reacting with something that's acidic or basic. Well, let's talk acidity then, because acidity is often a misunderstood term when it comes to science. Now, acidity measures the amount of H plus or OH minus ions in solution. Now, these ions are what determine its acidity level. If 
the number of ions are equal, if the H plus and the OH minus are equal, then the solution is what we consider neutral, a neutral solution. Now, if we have H plus that are greater than the OH minus, the solution is considered acidic. And if the OH minus are greater than the H plus, then the solution is considered basic. Now, the confusing part about this is even though it's considered basic, it is still a measure of its acidity. So it's not just measuring the acid in the solution, it's measuring whether it's an acid or a base, acidic or basic, and that's measuring its acidity level. Well, this level we often measure on a scale called the pH scale. And the pH scale is a scale going from 0 to 14 that measures the acidity. And pH can actually be measured with this pH paper. We're going to look at some pH paper. And this pH paper, depending on the color of the paper, will tell us whether it is acidic or basic. Now, the pH scale is a unique scale because the pH scale measures how acidic something is. The lower the pH, the more acidic the solution is. What this tells us is that each number below 7 is actually 10 times more acidic than the previous number. We're going to look at that in a second here. Now, if we're looking at how basic a solution is, that's a higher pH. So the higher number is more basic, the lower number is more acidic, and again, each number above 7 is 10 times more basic. Well, what does that mean? Let's look at an example here. If we were comparing two things on the pH scale, something that has a pH of 4 is actually 10 times more acidic than something of a pH of 5. As we go up one number on the pH scale, it goes up in multiples of 10, 10 times greater. Well, if we are measuring the pH of something and it's pH 3, pH 3 compared to pH 5 is a hundred times as great, 10 times 10. And this pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. Now, if something has a pH that is exactly at 7, pH 7 is something that is neither acidic nor basic, this is what we would call a neutral solution. And we're going to look at more pHs and do some experiments with pH paper and pH scale and look at that indicator chart a little bit more in class.